Welcome back to another crochet tutorial with Cozy Rosie UK and today I'm going to be sharing with you this spiral springtime bunting. This pattern uses three of my favourite colours all together to create a spiral triangle. You can add on a tassel or just some fringing to create a really cute looking bunting that's going to add a bit of spring colour anywhere in your house. Now before we get started don't forget to hit that subscribe button and of course the notification bell so that you never miss out another one of my crochet patterns or tutorials again. Let's find out the materials we need to make our very own spiral springtime bunting. Hmm, that's quite hard to say. So I'm going to be using three different colours and they're all an Aran weight yarn so the size for or um, a worsted weight yarn. Now I'm going to be using my favourite, which is of course Paint Box Yarns Simply Aran. It's great if you're on a budget and it works up really well. Now the three colours that I have here is colour A, I'm using Pale Lilac, which is shade number 245. I've got Banana Cream, which is shade number 220. I'm not sure if this one is sold out at the moment. And this one is Ballet Pink, which is shade number 252. I think they look really great together and really capture those springtime colours in my mind. Now I'm going to be using the recommended hook size for this yarn, which is a 5mm hook. This yarn doesn't really have a gauge as such, it's just making sure that you're getting an even size for all of your triangles. Now my finished triangles measure 5 inches and then I've added about a 3 inch tassel on each of them. You're going to need a pair of scissors and it is optional but if you want to use stitch markers you can do. I'm going to go rogue today and be brave to go without them because we're going to be working all three colours in each round which if you've made any of my other spiral patterns you'll be well aware of how to do that. I'm going to take you through the technique in detail so don't worry if you haven't made anything like this before. So there's only five rounds to this pattern. It's a nice quick one to make each of these triangles and then you'll find a link um, later on in the video to go ahead and make your tassels separately to join your bunting. So we're going to start by making a slip knot and placing that on our hook. And from here we're going to make a chain of four. So we just yarn over and pull through the loop on our hook. So that was once, we're going to do that again for number two, again for number three, and once again for our fourth chain. And we're going to slip stitch into the first chain that we made by bringing our hook down to where our slip knot is and just popping it through the top loop of our chain, yarning over, pull through and straight through the loop on your hook to slip stitch and that creates a ring for us to work into. So we're going to work our stitches into that ring. So we're going to start by making a chain of three. Now throughout this pattern, our chain three does count as a US double crochet, which is the same as a UK treble crochet. From here, we're going to get ready to work into the center of that ring, ignoring that space where we've done our slip stitch. We want to go into that central ring there. We start by yarning over the hook and inserting our hook into the middle of that ring. And you'll notice I've got my tail popped over my hook as well. So I'm going to work over that at the same time. We're going to yarn over to bring our loop up. So we have three loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through those first two loops. Yarn over and pull through the last two loops to work our first US double crochet. The same as a UK treble crochet. I'm going to work a further two double crochets into that same space. So we yarn over, insert our hook. I'm still working over that tail. I'm going to yarn over, bring that loop up. Yarn over, pull through two and pull through two. And for a third time, we yarn over, insert our hook, bring our loop up, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. So this is where you can secure your loop of your stitch with a stitch marker if you want to. We can go rogue as I am, which is just going to bring up a nice big loop and drop that off my hook. Because what we're going to do now is move that yarn out of the way because we're going to attach our second colour into the ring. So I'm going to insert my hook straight through the middle, making sure that that tail is also over the hook and pick up my second colour, which for me is going to be yellow. I'm just going to place that over the hook with the tail at the back and bring that through 
and we're going to go straight into repeating what we made with that first colour by working a chain of three. So I've got it pinched all at the back there. So we're going to yarn over, pull through one, two and three. I'm going to make sure that my tail is with my first tail. And then we're going to work three US double crochets into the center of that ring again. So we yarn over and insert. I'm kind of gripping both those tails and the crochet between my fingers there to work that first one just to make sure that everything's nice and tight. So that was number one. We're going to repeat that and work a second, two, and a third, three. I'm going to bring out some yarn because I, once again I'm going to bring up a loop and just leave that hanging. I'm just going to make sure I can shift this down a little bit by bringing it round because we need some base because it's time to add on our third colour. So once again just going to insert my hook, pick up my third colour, my ballet pink, and I'm going to place that over the hook once again with the tail at the back and bring that through making sure that I've pulled over both those other ends as well and we're ready to repeat these stitches again with our third colour. So we start with our chain of three, two and three and once again we're going to work three US double crochets into the centre of this ring. So we yarn over and insert. I'm now working over all three tails, bring that loop back up, pull through two and pull through two and repeat that for a further two stitches, that's number two and number three. So at the end of round one, we should have the equivalent of four US double crochets in each colour. So our chain three counts as one, and then we've got one, two and three. Now we're finished with colour C, or the third colour, so I'm just going to bring up a loop and I'm rotating around to go back and popping colour A back onto my hook. I'm going to make sure that loop is out of the way and that I'm using my yarn, not my tail, because you'll be amazed the things that we pick up when we're crocheting. So going into round two, we're going to be working into the top of that chain three that we made. And we're going to work one US double crochet into the top of our chain three. So there's one, two, there's the top and there's our next stitch. So I'm just going to insert my hook underneath two loops of that third chain. I'm going to yarn over, bring my hook back through, pull through two and pull through two. Now our next stitch is here and this is where we're going to work our first corner. So we're going to yarn over the hook and insert, ready to work, one US double crochet. And we're going to work the rest of the corner also into this same stitch. So we're going to work a further US double crochet. We then chain two to create the corner space. And we're working two further double crochets into that same stitch again. So we yarn over and reinsert our hook into the same stitch and work that US double crochet. And we're working a fourth double crochet into that same stitch again. This creates a space for our corner to appear and then we're going to work one double crochet into the next stitch. Now we're going to leave this next stitch where our loop is coming out of unworked because it's a bit of a challenge to work into it when that loop is there. So we are done with colour A so we can pull up a loop and rot rotate round and place colour B onto our hook ready to repeat those same stitches in colour B. So I'm going to find that third chain, which is there. I'm going to yarn over, ready to work that first stitch and insert my hook underneath the top two loops of my chain. Yarn over, bring my hook back through, pull through two and pull through two. And then we're going to work our corner into the next stitch. So our corner, remember, was made up of two double crochets. That was one and two. We chain two and we work a further two double crochets into that same stitch again. 
one and two. We're then going to work one final double crochet into that last stitch before skipping the stitch where our loop is coming out of. Once you've completed those stitches, you can bring up your loop and just let that hang as long as it doesn't get in the way. Now, if like me, you're finding that things are getting a little bit tangled, just flip your project towards you and it will untangle all of your yarns. Kind of. So we're going to repeat this in colour C, which is colour 3, colour 2, I'm not sure. Let's call it colour 3, making sure that end is at the back. because It's a way, good way of remembering which is your right side and your wrong side. So once again, we're going to find that third chain, yarn over our hook and insert into the top of that chain three to work our first double crochet. We're then working our corner in the top of our next stitch, which is two double crochets. A chain two. And then a further two double crochets back into that same stitch. That's one and two. We just need to work one double crochet into the next stitch. This is the one that looks a little bit different because obviously we've already worked the rest of row two in that first colour. So that completes row two or round two. I think these are classed as rounds. And we will now have six double crochets and one chain two space in each colour. So I'm going to bring up that loop and just continue to rotate to place colour one back on my hook. So for round three, we're going to start by working one double crochet into each of the next four stitches. So that's one, two, three, and four. And then we're back to our chain two space and we're going to place our corner into that chain two space. So we're going to be working two double crochets. That was number one. This is number two. We then work a chain of two and then working back into that same chain two space, we work a further two double crochets. We're then going to work one double crochet into each of the next two stitches. So we yarn over and work. You have to make sure, oh, this is very important. This stitch or the hole can disappear underneath your corner. So make sure that you're not working where your loop is coming out. You should still have two stitches remaining. So we're going to yarn over, find that stitch and work one double crochet and then work into your next stitch for your second. Once again, we're going to bring up a loop and rotate, ready to work the same stitches in colour two and three. I'll do colour two with you again. So we yarn over and work one double crochet into each of the next four stitches. So that's number one, two, three, and four. And that should bring us to our chain two space where we're going to work our corner, which is a two double crochets, a chain two, followed by a further two double crochets into that same chain two space. And that is number two. We should have two stitches to work, so make sure you find that stitch in case it's slipped underneath your corner and work one double crochet into each of the next two stitches. We can then bring that loop up, ready to repeat in our final colour, the same stitch pattern again. So I'm going to quickly run you through it, or you can just carry on and make it, because we're going to be working one double crochet into each of the next four stitches, followed by our corner in that chain two space. So for our corner, we're working two double crochets, a chain two, and a further two double crochets, all into that same chain two space. 
We then finish by working one double crochet into each of the next two stitches. And obviously when you get to the end of colour three, you have to kind of resist carrying on around. I'm going to bring that loop up. I'm just going to give my work a turn because we need to untwist this a little bit. There we go. So at the end of round three, you should have made 10 double crochets and one chain two space in each colour. Going straight into round four. And for this round, we're going to be working seven double crochets before we get to our corner. So we yarn over and work one double crochet into each of the next seven stitches. So one, two, My yarn's running out, there we go, <laughs> seven. And then we've reached our corner, so we're ready to work our corner again, which is of course, two double crochets, our chain of two, and a further two double crochets, all into the same chain two space. So I have trouble with this ball of yarn here. Once we've worked our corner, we're going to work one double crochet into each of the next three stitches. So that's one and two. That's wrong. And this is why it's important to find that corner, because there it is. It slipped underneath and I got myself confused in the last three stitches. So one, two and three. Going to at least repeat those stitches in colour two and three, remembering that you only need to work three double crochets after your corner. So we're going to work one double crochet into each of the next seven double crochets before we get to our corner. We're going to work our corner space, which is a two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet, all into that chain two space. And then you will continue to work one double crochet into each of the next three stitches. And I'll meet you for round five, because believe it or not, that's where we're going to be fastening off. So continue to repeat those last few stitches in your colour two and three, and I'll meet you for round five in a moment. So at the end of round four, remembering you should just work those last three stitches after your corner, we're going to continue on to our final round. So I'm going back to colour one, and this time we're going to be fastening off when we've finished this section of the pattern. So have your scissors ready. We're going to start by working one double crochet into each of the next 10 stitches and that should take us up to our corner. That's number two. In our corner space we're going to be working a little bit differently this time because we're getting ready to fasten off. So instead of working at our normal corner we're going to work two double crochets. So that's one and two. We then make a chain of one and we're going to work, so we rotate our work to work around the post that we've just created. So we're going to be working around the post of the double crochet that we've just made. So we're going to insert our hook in between those two double crochets and work two single crochets. So that was one and we reinsert for our second. We're then going to work one single crochet into our chain two space, so into our corner, work a further single crochet and then we're going to work one slip stitch into that last stitch after our corner. We can then then grab your scissors if you're happy with it, all your stitches are correct and just fasten off. I can then use my hook to bring that through and that finishes off the first part of round five. We're going to repeat this with each of the colours around, so until all the colours are fastened off. So we're working one double crochet into each of the next 10 stitches all the way up to our next corner. And then once we've reached our corner and worked those 10 double crochets, into our corner space we work two double crochets and two make a chain of one, rotate your work to work around the post of the last double crochet that you made. So we're working two single crochets around that last post. 
So in between those two stitches, we're then going to work a final single crochet into that chain two corner space before creating a slip stitch into that first stitch after the corner. We can then fasten off that colour, bring up our loop, and that finishes off that one. So we're just going to repeat this with our final colour, working those 10 double crochets. And once we've reached our corner, we're working two double crochets, our chain one, before we rotate our work to work in between those two double crochets, placing two single crochets. We then work our final single crochet back into that corner space before slip stitching to the first stitch after our corner. We can fasten off this final colour and bring that through to complete our triangle. Now, if like me, you still got a hole in the middle, if you pop your work over, you need to pull each of, start by pulling the first colour that you used and that will close the hole and then make sure you've pulled the other colours too, just to close up that hole in the middle. All that's left to do is to weave these ends in and of course because it's me I need to weave all my ends in on all of seven. If you make five, seven, nine of these triangles it's going to make a great addition to your bunting. Once you've woven your ends in, you will find a secondary video linked here and in the description box below where you can learn to make your tassels. Now I've already made a couple of the tassels and I've joined one just to check that it works okay. But before we do our tassels, before you head off, so before you head off to do your tassels, let's join our flags together. So you're gonna need all of your ends woven in. I've got a couple of my tassels attached and I've got all of my flags. Now it's up to you if you have them all facing the same way with their colours. I'm going to be doing them slightly different colours. So I'm going to start with one colour and work all the way along. And there's, I'm not putting any spaces between my flags because the amount that I have look quite good on their own. So you're going to need to pick one of your three colours to work your border in. And I'm going to be using my ballet pink just because this is the first one that I have and we're going to work one single crochet across all the flags to join them. So we're going to start with your first flag, choose whichever you colour you want at the bottom and then just insert your hook into your first stitch right at the corner and rejoin your yarn. I'm just going to place my tail over towards the back and slip stitch through making a chain one to secure. So we're going to work back around that post at the top and we're going to place two. So we've got one there and one here. So you can see here, this is where our slip stitch was. So I'm just going to work into that stitch, placing one single crochet, and then we can work across each of the single crochets across the top all the way to the next corner. So as we're approaching that corner you can see that we've got those stitches there to work into and then we reach the end. Now I'm going to work, so we have to work into the first of the double crochets that we worked. So we're just kind of finding, there's the chain one that we made and there's the stitch. And we're just inserting our hook into that last or the first single crochet that we made just to give us a nice square edge and then we can get ready to attach our next triangle and we're going to do that by finding that first stitch and inserting our hook we're just going to slip stitch these together just by going through the stitch on the next flag and straight through the loop on our hook and that would join them nicely together we can then make a chain of one, ready to continue to work one single crochet into each of the stitches across. And where that slip stitch was worked, we're just going to work another single crochet and that just neatens up that edge. You can continue to work across this flag and I'll show you this join once again when we reach the next corner. 
So once we've reached the corner, we're going to skip that chain one and work into that next single crochet. Working another single crochet, ready to repeat this join. So we pick up our next triangle and I'm changing colour around again. And we need to find that first stitch after the chain one, just to insert our hook into that one and then slip stitch them together by bringing the yarn through and straight through the loop on your hook. Make a chain one and you're ready to carry on. So continue to repeat this with all the triangles that you have and then you will be ready to add on your tassels. So the way that I'm going to secure my bunting to what's going to be hopefully in my garden, I'm just going to add a strand of yarn and tie that to whatever I want to attach this to. Normally I would make a long chain but then I don't think it's necessary because this is not very heavy even with these tassels on. I think just a single strand of yarn is going to be more than enough to secure it. If you did want to add a chain on you can just reinsert your hook back into that first stitch and make a length of chain so that you can secure your bunting like that instead. So as I continue to join all of my remaining flags, don't forget you'll find a link below to go and make your tassels so that you can add on that final detail onto your bunting. I really hope that you've enjoyed making your very own spiral springtime bunting. Don't forget to tag me in a picture of your finished bunting. Have it out on display ready for Easter or even just for any summer gathering. I will see you again in the next video.